welcome back to the woods. And welcome back to another army surplus bushcraft bargains but in this one this is a US edition for my friends on the other side of the Atlantic Now these army surplus bushcraft bargains videos have proved to be very very popular you guys clearly do like them and the only negative feedback I've had and there has been a great deal of it is from my friends over in the States now you've all said it's been great gear they've been great reviews etc we would love to have some of that gear but we just can't get it over in the States or if you can by the time you've paid import duty etc etc it suddenly become prohibitively expensive so what i thought i'd do in this one is i would take a look at a few bits and pieces of us army surplus that i've encountered that i think is really really good kit and probably you guys could get very cheaply over on your side of the pond Of course there will also be stuff for you guys over here in the UK as well because US Army surplus well you can pretty much get it worldwide which isn't surprising the US has probably the world's biggest armed forces probably uh, certainly outside of the communist world so there should be in theory you should be able to get it most places and nearly all of it however I certainly know from from the UK there's not huge amounts of US surplus out there. We did have a place in the UK which seemed to sell almost exclusively US Army surplus. I think they were based in Norfolk or Suffolk. Strangely, after the US Air Force pulled out of Suffolk and Norfolk, that little place disappeared. So there is stuff out there. I've tried to aim it somewhere in between. Some stuff you can still get in, in the UK, some of it yeah, it's probably going to be easier to get if you are US based. So this is the first item of US Army surplus I'm going to look at. And this one is the US Army Large Alice Pack. They brought out a medium version as well, but this is the larger version. It comes in olive green. It later came out in a woodland uh, disruptive pattern and it's a large capacity infantry style rucksack. It's got an external frame which is quite a heavy frame and when I first encountered Alice Packs it was one of the medium ones many many years ago and it came with this quite bulky quite heavy frame and I could never really see well that it was that good because 
the weight of the pack and the capacity of the pack didn't justify the weight of the frame. With this one, the large sack, <clears throat> this one is quite a bit larger. It has one main compartment inside, which will easily take your sleeping bag, sleeping system, etc. Inside that, there is a, another compartment which is closer to the frame, so you can put dense, heavy items in there. On the outside, on the large one, you've got three external pockets, two which are sort of water bottle size, and then you've got this one slightly larger central pocket. These two ones have a sleeve running down the back and they have little attachment points at the top, so you can attach stuff to the outside. Things like you could drop a, a small axe or something down the back of the pocket. So it's on the outside of your pack, but it's still stored securely. <coughs> The large model also has an extra three pockets on the top and these are more sort of magazine size pockets. Uh, pops that fastening. This particular one, uh, it has one compartment there. The other one has been split and so it becomes a double sized one, which means you can put bigger stuff in it. Up in the lid, it's got a little piece up here, two tabs, you separate them and the lid is hollow. It's Velcro fastening, so it's, it's not zipped, but it's not a bad size. Now, it is a good size pack. It's not as big as our British PLCE 100 litre Bergen, but it will carry quite a reasonable amount of kit. I would say you're probably looking at about a 70 litre Bergen there. So <coughs> it takes quite a bit of kit. This one's been tailored a little, the harness isn't the original harness, it's one that's been uh, added. The buckles, the original metal buckles, looks like they've been replaced with plastic ones. And I say, it, it looks like this actually isn't mine. Um, I've had them, I've used them. I think they're a very good, very robust piece of kit. This one I borrowed off a friend, the other person that I know that uses one is my brother, and he used one for years and years. Um, while he was in the army, he did a long range jungle patrols course uh, over in Brunei. And all of the instructors over there are very experienced instructors, a lot of them special forces guys, and they tend not to use regular kit. The Bergen that they used was not the SAS Para Bergen or the PLCE Bergen. It was this, the large Alice pack, because it could fit all the kit they needed in there. However, the profile of these, they hang quite low, and it's sort of a, a pear shape. And so, as you're moving through dense vegetation, they don't stick above your shoulders. They're not particularly wide. So, they tend not to snag on vegetation so easy. They're very robust. They can be dropped out of planes, helicopters, etc. They are a very sturdy piece of kit with a good capacity. Now, these have been copied. I know there's a couple of American manufacturers that make uh, a kind of version of these, but out of modern materials, and then you buy a frame and put them on. You can still get these, although these have been stopped being issued for quite some time. You can still get these. Um, I looked up on eBay, I found one in the UK, strangely enough, for about £60. And there were about four or five different examples. Over in the States, I would imagine there are still quite a few of them around. And I would imagine they're not that expensive if you, if you go through something like eBay. And I think if you're starting out in bushcraft, this is pretty much an ideal capacity pack. Yes, the medium is great for day trips, etc. But if you go out for a few days, this, the large Alice, is an excellent bit of kit. So my next item is this, my US Army metal mug and stand. If you're a regular on this channel, you will know that I use this an awful lot. And I have used this an awful, awful lot for a very long time. I sat down and worked it out and I think it's probably, I think I was in my mid to late 20s when I got this. And that was 30 years ago. This has made an awful lot of cups of tea in that time.
Now, when I got this all those years ago, I'd it was oh, long before they issued the, the Crusader mug in this country. For a little while, we had a, a metal mug which fitted on top. Um, if you're British, you'll know the one. It had the plastic rim that was removable and harboured all sorts of nasty things behind it, or it melted. It was all round rubbish. The Crusader mug, well, that hadn't even been thought of back then, I don't think. And I was looking for a metal mug that I could use, I could get a brew on the go, and I found one of these American ones with the stand. It didn't have the lid back then. That's uh, an add-on which I've bought since. I think this one was a, a heavy cover one. But the actual mug itself, it's a great, great, great bit of kit. It hasn't got the graduations on the inside like the British one. It's not quite as big as the British one. It has the butterfly handles, very, very similar. But it's also an awful lot lighter. And very strangely, when you use this one, and people told me about this before I got it, and I didn't believe them, but it's true. With the British one, when you, when you sip it, if the tea's too hot, it burns your lip. With this one, it doesn't. It's really, really weird. It's just a great, great item, and it's very usable, and it's very robust. And it's a bit of an old friend because I've had it so, so long. Now, you can still pick these up. I, I had a look online last night and there was somebody selling pretty much exactly the same kit. It was the mug, the stand and a lid. And I think they, they wanted 20 quid for it on eBay. If you look around, you can get copies of them. You can still pick up the genuine ones. I looked on a site over in the States called Army Surplus Warehouse. They had them, they were very reasonably priced. They were, I think they were like less than $10 for the cup uh, and I think about $5 for the stand. So all in all, a great bit of kit. And if you're looking for a good quality metal mug that will last you a long time, and I mean a long time, you can't go wrong with the USGI metal mug. Now the US Army water bottle that went with it, I replaced and replaced it with one of these, one of the, the Nalgene jobs. And <clears throat> these are very, very good. Unfortunately, they seem to be very, very difficult to get hold of at the moment. But if you can get one, get one because they are a tip top bit of kit. So my next item of US Army surplus is this. And this is, a USGI woolen watch cap and they come in green or black I don't know whether they're actually surplus I remember when I got this one a long long time ago um, it had uh, a little sticker on it which said genuine US Army uh, item 100% wool etc 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 I think I paid five pounds for it uh, and that was a very long time ago I got it about the same time I got the mug so this is probably about 30 years old it's been trimmed down a little bit I've got quite a small head uh, and it's also shrunk because it's wool and it got put in the wash accidentally uh, and so this one has become my beanie now as I said they're made from 100% wool they are also double skinned so they're a double thickness the wool I don't find overly itchy. I do find this a very, very good item. And for the money, they're very hard to beat. I've got a green one that I use that looks very similar. It's not, it's one that cost me an awful lot more money um, and it's fraction softer. Uh, it hasn't got the double knit construction that this one has. <coughs> this is a great great item and I say I've been using this one probably for about 30 odd years so if you're looking for a wool hat go and get one now they also do I think it's the same company I'm assuming they're a government contractor they do gloves and a scarf and all of those items are exceptionally good I had a pair of the gloves years ago they got nicked um, and I've meant to get around to get myself a new pair um i will at some point and the scarf i don't have any experience of but the hat if 
it's as good a quality as the hat, then yeah, it would be a great, great item to buy. So next, my next item, again this is something I've had for a very long time and it's had various different roles in the time that I've had it and it's this, a lot of people have probably never seen one of these before, uh, it's a decontamination kit box uh, for use in a nuclear, biological and chemical warfare environment. It hasn't got the original contents in it. I think its official designation is decontamination kit 258A1. If you do a search on decontamination kit box, these are what come up. And I guess they're like a military Tupperware, I guess. Essentially, it's a small box with a sealable lid with a little strap that keeps the two together. It's got a good seal running around the top of it. It's very, very durable. It seals water out very, very well. And it's ideal for if you need to keep items safe and dry. Now, as I said, this one has had various roles over the years. Um, currently, it has uh, a mini power pack and several sets of cables in there. It prevents that getting damaged and it prevents water ingress into it. And it's ideally suited for that. Other items it's been used for. It's had my brew kit in over the years. It had my wash kit in for many years. Um, but the item that it's been used for the most is this was my dump kit box. Now dump kit, for those of you who don't know what it is, uh, if you're out in the woods and you need to do what bears do, all the accoutrements you need to carry and keep dry and safe, like paper, a lighter, etc you can keep in here and it keeps it all safe and when you go in off you go with your little box you can even use the, the actual box itself for digging a hole to do your business in so this little box they don't cost a lot you can still get them i looked them up last night on the internet you can pick them up in the uk for i think about four pounds fifty five pounds around that over in the states you must better get loads of these. I would imagine there were millions and millions and millions of these made and they're all kicking around doing nothing now. So they're probably as cheap as chips, as we say over here. So my next bit of US Army surplus that I use, and I use a lot, and I've used them a lot for a lot of years. Again, I pick these up I must have been in my early to mid thirties. So I've had these at least 25 years, probably. And it's these. And these are Long Johns. They're extreme cold weather clothing system, Long Johns Brown. You can get a matching shirt, which I had the shirt as well, which is very similar to these sort of zip neck uh, type ones. Obviously, during the day, I prefer to wear wool. Most of the time, I prefer to wear wool, whether it's merino, etc. However, these thermal bottoms, long johns, call them what you like. These are made from polypropylene. They've got a, a elasticated waist and an elasticated bottom. They've got the bit at the front for when you've got to go for a wee in the night, etc., etc. And these have kept me so warm over the years. Oh. <clears throat> these, I think, are worth their weight in gold. They are an amazing bit of kit. Quite difficult to get hold of over here. I did look on a couple of the American surplus uh, websites and you can still pick these and the shirts up relatively cheaply. I think these were $16. They're great. During the night, or when I go off to my pit at night, I'll get into, into my 
my hammock or into my tent etc I take off my kit from during the day and I get changed into my kit for at night and these are what I chuck on because they help to keep me that bit warmer I've got some Dutch sleep socks as well which I put on and that combination just keeps my whole lower body completely toasty and unless it's absolutely baking middle of the summer the rest of the year I use this I swear it helps me carry a lighter sleeping bag because you stay so toasty and warm wearing these so look them up they are well 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 worth buying so next this item isn't the original one uh, it's one that I've bought since because my original one I think got pinched and um, what it is is this some of you guys will, will recognize this this is a copy of the, the US Army net, uh, match safe and I had one of the original ones and I had it for years and, and it kept a selection of small items in there uh, and it lived in my pocket and it was so so good I, I just can't describe these later ones have uh, a little mini ferro rod on the bottom the original one had a, a little striker on there the items that i used to keep in here were there were a few lifeboat matches uh, some fishing line a few fish hooks a couple of little weights just those little tiny bits and pieces i also had a, a small round mirror that fitted in the top nowadays well i keep matches in there and down inside if you can see it there's a a, a bobbin with thread on it uh, there is a needle wedge down the side there's some stripe paper along the top there and there is matches in underneath so it's a combination fire lighting and emergency sewing kit if you like they are great they've got a little o-ring seal the thread on them well you can see it took me quite a while to undo it and that is the good thing about it quite often with these screw top pouches you put them in your pocket and they gradually undo you reach into your pocket to pull it out and all the contents spill out that never happens with these the waterproof seal keeps it dry in there but it's that length of thread that actually keeps it nice and secure a few times i've reached into my pocket and the top's been loose but it's never been off it's a very small very cheap little item to get if you can get one one of the original ones get it these copy ones uh, even these are starting to get hold of get hold of uh, harder to get hold of and they are <coughs> getting increasingly expensive i think i saw one of these the other day for 10 pounds well i remember when these were one pound 50. so keep your eyes open see if you can get hold of them so my last item kept in here and it pretty much lives in here because this is a nice little dry bag and uh, this is an item that I really treasure and what this is is a US Army poncho liner and I was gifted this years ago I've modified it I've done all sorts of things with it I've set this one up so it can become an under quilt for my uh, hammock it's also quite often used as a sleeping bag or a sleeping bag liner my little down sleeping bag sometimes in the winter you get a bit of a chill in there and this added to my down bag still comes in at less weight than my Corinthia sleeping bag so this is a really good little item I've done a couple of other modifications to it I've put a zip in so that you can zip it round to turn it into uh, a sleeping bag i've also put a little zip in the center which becomes a neck hole and and that's so that i can use it as a poncho so sitting around the fire in the evening if it gets a bit chilly i can pull this on as i said it doubles up as a poncho liner and it's it's such a good item in fact it's such a good item Quite a few companies have now started to copy them and they've copied some of the mods that people would do to them so you can now buy the, the helicon text one that, that's got a hood it's got a 
pocket on the front and it's got all these different ties and i think they're about 90 pounds us army poncho liners you can pick up for 15 to 20 pounds i think i saw some on one of the american sites 15 to 16 dollars and they are a great item some of the later ones and this is uh i think this one is from the 1970s some of the later ones that they they issue i think the us marines issue a marpat one and it's got a zip running around it uh, i'm sure some of you american guys will, will correct me if i'm wrong on that um but it's a really good item essentially all it is is a synthetic lightweight camp blanket and when it's a little bit cold and you can just pull this thing around you it's great it keeps you lovely toasty and warm as i said my one's been modified so i can wear it as a full poncho and it is a very good item and they're very very inexpensive to buy great item to have in the back of the vehicle um, just in case your vehicle breaks down you, you've got something you can wrap around yourself to help keep you warm something you can keep in the bottom of your day sack this one's been used for all sorts of things uh my kids use it it's a picnic blanket throw over the bed you name it they use it for pretty much everything but it is just a great great item now obviously its intended use is as a poncho liner that's what it says on the tin and it's got these these ties on there which you can tie into the grommet on, on a u.s army poncho and then Using that as a combination, you can use it as a sort of lightweight sleeping bag, bivvy bag combination. So it's a well thought out item. The synthetic lining means it's nice and lightweight and it also dries out quicker than a wool blanket. So it's, it's a good item and it makes a lot of sense to carry one. So there you go that's a few u.s army surplus items um that i think are really good and i've used the hell out of there are a few other ones that i really like there's the, the little nomex flying gloves which i've got a pair of which i keep for the summer just as a, a pair of lightweight work gloves and they are phenomenal they are really good if you see a pair anytime get yourself some they're really good um i know with american army surplus in general it tends to be very very well made my granddad who was a world war ii vet always used to harp on about oh the americans got much better gear than we did uh, when my brother was was in the army again i think the same thing applied we were still using like canvas webbing and they had alice stuff uh, and you know they had fast drying ripstop nyco stuff we still had heavy cotton took three days to dry stuff so US Army surplus is very, very good stuff. And there's, as I said, it's one of the biggest armed forces in the world. So there's a lot of it out there. Looking at some of the American uh, Army surplus websites, you still do a lot of the older stuff as well. The M1951 wool shirts, etc. Uh, helmet liners that are wool lined for the winter. Really good stuff at very reasonable prices is absolutely ideal for the bushcrafter so check it out and if anyone wants to send me a five button pullover i'd absolutely love one so there you go that is my army surplus bushcraft bargains us edition you asked for it you got it hope you enjoyed this video if you did then remember hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't already please like and subscribe to the channel down below in the description box you'll find links over there to my etsy shop pop over there get yourself one of my little green craft badges and from time to time there's a few other bits that i sell over there as well including my edc light pouches and i've got uh, another run of my water bags these ones slightly different the water filtration bags they are going to be coming up very very soon so keep your eyes on the shop for those 
also over there there is a link to my patreon page um, if you're a patron you get a heads up early on when items of kit are coming up for sale in the shop you also get a discount on stuff so it's well worth uh, the money to become a patron god dear oh dear i think that's everything i've been neil and until next time stay safe